You see? That's how it spreads its seed. We've learned something. From now on, I shoot my dinner salad before I eat it. Hmm. We'll need to find another specimen. <laughs> how about an arachnid? Hello everybody and welcome, I'm Common and Cam, and today we're going to be ranking every Scorponok design from worst to best. And who better to join me than my good friend Vangelis. Hello, it's me, I'm Chris, I'm Vangelis, I'm on the internet, and uh, thanks for inviting me, I love to talk about bugs, especially robot ones. Well, I'm terrified of them, so that's why I need your help. We've got a big scorpion, we've got little scorpions, and then we've got a pig scorpion, so we've got so much to talk about. When I was little, actually, uh, G1 Scorponok was one of the, the first toys I was able to successfully grail. Because uh, I never had Scorponok growing up, but a great color scheme, it's just a cool idea. I also like bugs. Uh... Yeah, there's that as well. <laughs> and that's the thing with Scorponok, he has had a wide range of unique designs, which I think is going to make this really interesting to look at. He has one of those names that he can't quite get away from, you know? It's like, hi, I'm Scorponok, I turn into a plow, and it's like, what happened to you? Yeah, it's like, what's he going to do, turn into a crab? Like, dude, come on. Yeah. Now, without further ado, let's dive straight into the tier names. And for the best Scorponok, it of course had to be... Scorponok Terrorize! And now for the second highest tier, we'll have a quote from the 2007 movie. I thought you said that thing was dead, man. Strap it down. Strap This thing is wicked. And now for the middle tier, we'll have a quote from Energon. Sorry, but I think that you're in no position to tell me what to do. But, but you don't understand. Silence. Where well, we like it, but he deserves a punch in the face. And now for the second lowest tier, we'll have a quote from War for Cybertron Earthrise as featured on Netflix. Conspiring to dismantle. And now for the worst, Scorponok. It of course had to be. Fortress Maximus is unable to enlarge because he has used up his powers to operate on Spock. Fortress Maximus, prepare for your death today. You're gonna die. <laughs> First up is Generation 1 Scorponok, and this just screams 80s. This is a character that had two completely different storylines, like for the American Rebirth free parter he was just built from Lord Zarak, whereas in the Japanese continuity, Scorponok was actually the headmaster himself, and he built himself this giant body. Whichever storyline you prefer, regardless, the design is so cool, I really do like the colours. There's a bit of a slight difference when it comes to the cartoon and the toy, but I still like it. Purple is a very funny color, so the toy, you have a, very, a, a more red raisin purple, and then on that animation model, you've got a cooler, bluer purple. I am always a cool palette, cool purple kind of guy. You get this bulked out, like, armored vehicle of a scorpion. This is a scorpion who can't strike you with its tail, can't really, like, walk around that easily. So I, I like this one a lot. As a scorpion, obviously, you know, it's not the most effective scorpion, but somewhere between you know, terrorize and wicked for me. Now I've separated this tier list in design order, so next we're going to be talking about the Earthrise Scorponok. You know, this design was brought back for modern audiences, and I gotta say, it's pretty much identical with just a few slight differences. And I would say that it's pretty much a strictly better G1 Scorponok. The G1 Scorponok toy obviously suffers enormously from having a tiny, tiny, tiny head. It took like, what, 40 years and they managed to fix it eventually. If those little chrome claw pieces were on the Earthrise one, it would be, to me, a 100% strict improvement. It still basically is a 99% strict improvement. Now moving on to the Creos, and I do like these little guys, but when it comes to the Combiners and the Titans, I just don't think they ever get it right. I don't have it in me to bottom class this one because Creo was trying to do so much with so many things. So, I mean, like I said, I'm biased. If we're going to put him in the middle tier, I'm giddy. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, let's do it! Now, in the Japanese market, the Scorponok toy was re-released and recolored in the Black Zarek colors for the Super God Master Force. Basically, Scorponok just replaced his body. And I gotta say, I really do like these colors. It really works in the animation as well. 
Oh yeah, like the, the animation I think carries the colors almost better than the toy. Black and gold and red, it's just a good color scheme. I'm always very torn on him because as time has gone on, I like his colors. I just don't know if I like them more than Scorpinox. If I was 15, I would be fighting over this. Oh, they made a better Scorpinox who's black and gold like death and riches. But yeah, I, I kind of would place him just like between animation and toy Scorpinox because is a little more interesting, like, you know, for for the fault of the face not hiding away. Well, he would return again in the sequel series in Transformers Zone, but he didn't get, like, an alt mode or anything. It's just... I mean, this could be the potential for a new HasLab in the future. Yeah. He's got himself a hook. He's got himself a shield. He's a dude's a pirate now. But I really like this design. I, I had a bit of an agenda coming into this one, which is that when we got to the Zone version, I call that one a Terrorize, uh, partly because he doesn't have to be a toy. So he does cheat a little bit. Like all the Zone Decepticon resurrected generals, uh, they they all got these like to toyless designs that got to just be cool. Giving him an eye patch, uh, it was so much unspoken storytelling. Yeah, it, I think it's a it's a really cool way to you know tweak him up. And of course, capes are just fun. Now let's talk about Beast Wars Scorpionok, and we'll talk about the original toy because it's slightly different compared to the animation model. And I gotta say, I really do like this. There's something so vintage about it. And the reissues, you know, you can buy it still to this day. It's a toy that I think actually aged really well. In modern times, it's it's kind of clear the tail is half the toy. Like the giant spring-loaded multi-jointed tail sting gimmick. I have nostalgia for this one because this was one of my first Beast Wars toys. I mean, the prototype one, I just think is hideous. I don't like those colors. The, the place where I'm really torn, though, is like the prototype colors are so hideous. But then they like they circle around and I'm like, that is a scorpion I'd be terrified of going near in real life. Now, where should we place the original toy? I would, I would say it's wicked, if only because the Cyber Bee gimmick on the original at least, doesn't actually work very well. Now talking about the animation model, and I gotta say, I do like the cleanup here. I mean, he's a kind of a dumb character, and I think the design really shows. Like, I really love him. It's a shame he didn't get that trans metal design. He was sadly killed off in the show. The toy version looks like an assassin. Uh, in the show, he is not. He, he is incapable. He, I don't think that the, the show version of Scorponok would ever be able to sneak up on someone and stab them. He'd sneak up on them and say, hey, turn around so I can shoot you with the missiles in my hand. Uh, yeah, I stuck it to a Megatron and good. Mm, excellent. Well, that's the thing. If you look at the Forge to Fight design, which is based on this cartoon model, he just looks way more intimidating and he doesn't look like a goof at all. You know, and I guess it kind of takes away a bit of the personality of it, but I mean, it, I think it still looks cool. Like, this is one of the Forge to Fight designs that I really like. Yeah, Forge to Fight is the one in the meme that that, uh, that the guy's looking back at. Um, this is like handsome Beast Wars Scorpionok. Like this is this is maybe if, <laughs> yeah, if Beast yeah. Wars Scorpionok was was in his teens, this is him in like his late twenties, early thirties when he's like got himself together. The the Beast Wars one is the Terrorize, and this one is more of like a, a wicked, like the Forged to Fight one's almost more of a wicked. Because Forged Forged to Fight, Forged to Fight smooths his design out so much he also starts to look a little generic. Well, speaking of generic, we have the War for Cybertron Kingdom Scorpionok. Literally, there was loads of them in the show. Everything about this just feels toned down, like the claws aren't even that big, you know, and he doesn't do anything in the show. There's just no personality behind it. And uh, it's a shame because I was happy to see this guy back and he wasn't making any dumb remarks. Incompetent bug. <gasps> Where I would say the Earthrise Scorpionok is, is, is almost a strictly better one. This is the Kingdom Scorpionok is almost a strictly worse one than the Beast Wars one. It's not bad. It's not, I wouldn't put it down to like dismantle or anything. But uh, like you said, it, it somehow, and, and the show isn't helping, it, it just loses a lot of the character. For something that is literally still a henchman in the show, he looks less of a henchman in the show model. Yeah, he technically wins, but I'd punch him in the face. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Scorponok technically got a trans metal version. I'll stand up for this one a little bit because this is based on a McDonald's toy. I don't think this McDonald's toy was designed from the ground up to be Transmetal Scorpionok. It's more that it just sort of fell into that role in with the lack of anything else to be a Transmetal Scorpionok when, you know, Terrorsaur and a lot of other characters have a Transmetal design that exists. Not in the context of a McDonald's toy, he's pretty good 
for a McDonald's toy. I want to destroy him. I, I can't, like, I can only fight to a certain point because my argument is, why are we going to keep jumping up and down on this poor puppy dog? I'm sorry, dude, but... <laughs> <laughs> Let's put him down there because I'm about to be super mean. Oh, really? okay. You should introduce the next one, then. We've got uh, the d Days of Future s something. This is basically saying, like, okay, what if Beast Wars Scorponok, uh kind of resembled Fast Track, the little buddy who... I think it was Fast Track. The little buddy who came with G1 Scorponok. It rolls off me so hard with every passing year. He just doesn't look like the, the show version of Scorponok to me, and that, that's kind of the vibe he's trying to go for. He's not hench enough. He's hench, but he's not hench enough. Yeah, the only thing I like is this artwork of his profile, like the main head, and that's really it. The, all the people involved, great work. Um, but if this doesn't click with you on a very base level, like, you know, in, in my case, uh, then it's like, that's a lot of really great work. I don't, I don't really like it that much. <laughs> Okay, the next one is kind of a strange one. It didn't get a toy, but this is from Botcon's 2006 Dawn of Future Past comic. And I gotta say, I do like the colors. It kind of combines the Generation 1 a bit with Beast Wars. This one that was designed off of a construction vehicle-oriented Scorpion-like thing that was Energon Scorponok, because the colors are very, very odd. I'm not actually 100% sure... Because it, it's like they're going for Beast Wars Scorponok, but with G1 Scorponok green, kind of. And I'm like, I get it, but it's also hard for people to know who he's supposed to be <laughs> at a glance. Now we have the Shattered Glass Scorponok, which is just Sandstorm colors. This is, to me, pretty lame. I was never a fan of the Sandstorm deco that it is borrowing from. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really like a strong proponent of that color scheme. Now let's talk about the Transformers Energon Scorponok. We have the Superlink mode and the original Hasbro toy. And I gotta say, I just don't like this design. There's just so much about it that is just off. I don't like the proportions. The strengths really rely in its vehicle modes. Like I like the Scorponok mode and I like the jet mode, but everything else, I've just found this design hideous. And the animation in the show didn't help this either. The show was the worst show for this design to exist in because it's the show where they did almost nothing to stylize some of the robots. I am a fan of this toy as like a, a hands-on experience. Uh, I, I think that with one size class up, this would have been a really big something. That said, I also have a huge preference for the American colors over the Japanese colors. Part of what saves it visually for me the, on the American version, uh, and this is this is, you know, 20 years removed now. <laughs> Um, back in the day, I think I would have been a lot more like, no, Takara, but... Well, I suppose there was some sort of redemption for this design when they gave him back the original G1 color scheme in a reissue. Obviously, it's an existing color scheme. It's clashy like the American one, but with a little bit more, like, freedom and control. Well, they gave him a completely different head as well, like, he's got a brand new head. Oh, yeah, it's, it actually was a, a, a G1 Headmaster compatible socket that they put in there. Oh, really? Oh, oh well, that's actually pretty neat. Well, when it came to the Cybertron series, they brought this toy back, but in the Zarek colors. Um, so my favorite is Dark Scorponok, actually. He's a little bit subdued, but that red is still pretty explosive and translucent. Like, the aesthetics just really match uh, as well, uh, whereas the, the intended head is all angular and, and has a flip-down angular visor and everything. He coined the phrase, Japanese one I'm putting, I, I would argue goes into dismantle. Well, if we at least put one of the designs in there, I'll be happy. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a more, it's the most boring version of all of them. And it does nothing to, to play off of the weirdness of the robot mode, especially. Well, if you thought this design couldn't get any more boring, then I will prove to you that it can. With the built to rule Scorponok. <laughs> I mean, I just want to stomp on it. I want to destroy it. And this it. was 20 years ago they were trying to... No, this is 21 years ago they were trying to figure that out. Uh, I don't think they did. No, but, you know, <laughs> they, they tried really their best and, like... Did th they, this... though? I mean, come on. <laughs> Listen, they, they were trying to do something here, and I want to stick up for this poor kicked puppy. I've already put him in. <laughs> he's dead. He he voted he voted put him in, too. He's... he's... <laughs> Now, next one, we actually have one from Transformers Animated, and this was in the Arrival comic. I highly doubt that Derek would have approved of this, but I don't know. This, this seems like the kind of thing Derek would have tweeted derisively about. <laughs> yeah. If someone asked, you know? <laughs> next up, we have Pig Scorponok. Yes, Scorponok the Scorpion is now a pig. Hell yeah, it is. But I gotta say, I really do like this. They nailed the G1 aesthetic. 
So what I'm going to say is, I think this accomplishes exactly what Creo Scorponok accomplished. Um, except I would put this below. I think that I, I could argue this being like either I said you win or dismantle. I think he wins because he's a lot more appealing to me than the Creo one. Oh yeah, he's middle tier absolutely. Just in that order, I would get grumpy if he ended up in front of Creo Scorponok. <laughs> Now, it wouldn't be long that Scorponok would return to television. He appeared in the sequel series to Prime, Robots in Disguise. He technically has three versions. You've got the Hasbro toy, the cartoon, and then the Takara Tomy version. In the cartoon, he's all green, and then his toy, he's got a black helmet instead. And, you know, I actually do like this. It's, it's a lot more appropriate for a Scorpion character. I like the slimness, you know, and he's got a bit of bulk in some areas as well. I don't remember his character in the show, but I do like that massive tail. Like, he looks menacing. I don't know how well known this is about me, really, in the bigger picture. I am a massive RID 2015 Decepticons fan. I think the RID 2015 Decepticons are like a design tour de force, but also barely any of them got toys. So thankfully, Scorponok got one, right? I am a fan of this one. I think the, the cartoon colors, I don't like that green very much compared to the American toy. Uh, the toy version towards uh, Terrorize myself. Uh, I think it's just such a cool design. There was a gimmick where if you scanned the insignia, you could play them in the game, and we have Scorponok here, and he just looks absolutely awful. Like, this is... This isn't even the same character anymore. I, I will give them this. They got creative with the design. Obviously, they were not looking at the design from the show. They were just kind of going with, you know, Scorponok. Uh, he turns into a scorpion. It's an okay, neat design. If someone wanted to fight for it, I'd have a lot of wiggle room. Uh, I don't want to be that person, though, because I'm not the one who's fighting for it, and I, I don't think you are either. <laughs> yeah, I, I think he's prepared for his death, because I think he'll be an easy kill in the game. Not so much of an easy kill, but he did get shot at a lot in the film. We have the 2007 Scorpion up. What the hell? <laughs> Now, I can imagine a lot of Generation 1 fans not being thrilled, but I can imagine some Beast Wars fans being excited, but then disappointed when they see that he doesn't transform into a robot mode at all. Only the toy attempted, and I think this lack of a robot mode for me is what really downplays this design. Like, all the rest of the Decepticon designs have always been really cool and unique, but this one? It's just a robot scorpion. Now, yes, that's what he's always been, but there's always been more personality to him. He's actually had a robot mode, you know, and this one is just, yeah, it's just a robot scorpion now. You know, there's nothing else to it except for that. Let me, let me, let me march in here. Let me march in here and also be kind of mean. The movie version of Scorponok is the least interesting version of that Scorponok design by a, by a mile. The most interesting thing about this version of the design is those spinning triple gimlets inside the claws. Yes, yes. The robot, the, the original deluxe to me is still peak 07 Scorponok, because even though it's got a janky robot mode, there's character in that robot mode. And here's the thing, if this turned into anything, because uh, the Blackout partnership, I also think is a cool idea, but Scorponok doesn't turn into a part of Blackout, he just falls out of him. And I'm like, if, if he turned into a turbine engine of some kind, visibly, if any of the toys ever did that too, boy, I'd be so down with that. Sorry to all the lovers out there. I know there are fans of this one, uh, but uh, Cam did not get one of you on here, so uh, your boy's getting done <laughs> dirty, I think. Well, I mean, I guess in the prequel Titan comic, they attempted to give him a robot mode, but it, it doesn't really look anything unique or different either. But regardless, there's no denying that this design can look cool. Like, we all remember that trailer shot where he's charging at the military guys. Like, that is, without a doubt, one of the most badass shots in the movie. It's a good shot. Imagine if that shot happened and then he proceeded to, to like the moment they figured out like, okay, we can take this thing, then he stood up, right? See, now that would have been amazing. That thing is modal. That thing can do other stuff, right? What do we think, Ben? Does he belong in the bottom? If you want to put him there, I'm okay with it because I think all the other versions of 07 Scorponok are a little bit better. I'm even going to say that Titan comic panel is a little more exciting. <laughs> but I'm, I'm gonna. Oh, really? I, here's, here's the thing. It's a little more exciting because it reminds me of the the toys that I like. You know what? Let's get controversial. I'm gonna say he goes into today. You're gonna die. Too old for this crap. I'll even say Titan Comics because I said that Titan Comics panel also goes down there. But that's because it's it's there are better things to come for that design. They brought Scorponok back in the second film. 
for nothing. He hid under the sand <laughs> for like two years, popped out, and then got like eviscerated immediately. Well, I think some of his other toys should be eviscerated as well. Like we've got this Legends here, and his robot mode, he just looks like he's taken a shit. And then the 3D battle cards, I guess it's the only good 3D battle cards that exist. And then the last one, I don't even know what this thing is. It looks like a spider, not a scorpion. Like the face, I'm, I'm just talking about the face. <laughs> All of you say your last prayers and go and join Ultra Magnus. 3D battle card game one. They could have done anything with that build because all they're doing is making shapes. And yet, they still just had the scorpion stand up. Well, what about the tiny turbo one? I, I would like to bump that up to dismantle. He's got swagger. Like the, the way that his head is so big in both modes. I'm kind of like, you know what? You could kick my ass, probably. I can't believe that we put him higher than the movie Scorpion Art. Yeah, and then I'd go like, yes, I did. Uh, wh wh where's where's the argument here? I thought we all had taste. Oh! <laughs> oh, ow. Well, now moving on to the Deluxe class. This is like the only time that the Bayverse Scorpion Art got a Deluxe class, because after that, he would just be demoted, you know, to be in an accessory, and that's kind of it. And I can't deny that this is a fun toy to play with. Like, it actually looks cool. I really like those claws. And we got a Stalker version as well in the Revenge of Fallen, so they did bring the toy back and just recolored it, even though he never looked like this in Revenge of the Fallen. I thought he was going to turn into a robot, because I was like, they had enough time, they heard everyone go like, dang, that guy didn't turn into a robot, and I was like, oh, here we go, though, we're going to get, it's going to happen. You were just so optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> Died on the spot. I was, I was so optimistic for that second movie, because I was very naive at the time. This is actually a really fun toy. Uh, I, I played with this one a lot back in 07 and 08. Here's, here's the thing, I'm going to propose this. I think the gray one, the original one, is I said you win. I think Stalker Scorpionok is wicked. See, at least there was some sort of a win for the movie Scorpionok. This was my long game, because I know people are going to be mad how mean we both were <laughs> to the literal ILM design, but in my mind, I was like, no, this is building up, though, because the 07 toy, the Deluxe, I think is actually really cool, and the Stalker one is just a cooler version that I think also avoids potential gold plastic stuff with, like, the, the claw bits and just looks a bit cooler. So, yeah. I just hope that people stuck around and saw that. You know, they just haven't left already. <laughs> <laughs> now let's move on to Rise of the Beast, and he surprisingly has a lot of designs. It's like Hasbro and Paramount just couldn't decide what the definitive look is for this new version of Scorpionok. Or should we say Scorpionox? We have the original Deluxe, then we have the Studio Series, and then we have... Uh, I forgot this one. That's the one who comes with a Scourge toy and can turn into a hat for him. Yeah, I gotta say, out of these toys, the one that appeals to me the most is actually the original Deluxe class. The Studio Series one, I just... I don't know, I'm just not so big on those colours, and as for the hat guy, hey, I just think it's pretty dumb. I think the reason why I like the mainline one so much is because the head design is pretty unique and those colours, they really just pop out a lot more and bring that character to life. Like, he doesn't look generic looking. Oddly enough, it, it only came out under Buzzworthy Bumblebee. Uh, it got bumped. Oh, did it? Oh I, oh, I can't remember. He comes with a little scorpion pal who also turns into a weapon. No, I, I kind of agree with you on that, on the ranking of the three of them. The hat one, I, I would really like to put not in the bottomist tier only because i think the gimmick is adorable uh the studio series one i have a very big soft spot for the color scheme and i much like with the rid 2015 i really like what they do in in moving the claws to the shoulders i think what i like most about the studio series is just the scorpion mode you know that's kind of it now there is concept art of the head scorpion knock with a different color and arguably i say that looks better it's just badass. Not even just for being more accurate, but for being more interesting and not like Scourge's color palette. It feels like a true combination's happening. You know, I think it really is a shame that the Rise of the Beast Scorpionark, Scorpionark just became a generic soldier like the War for Sauratron Kingdom one. You know, I bet they just looked at that original design from 2007 and was like, yeah, there's probably multiple versions of that guy, and it's kind of a shame, really, but, I mean, it's the movie-verse, you know, I'm not going to think so hard about it. The one in the film who's just a scorpion thing that manifests out of a wall, I would actually put in the bottom with 07 Scorpionok for a lot of the same reasons. It's just a scorpion. Uh, it doesn't transform into anything. And I also, in Rise of the Beast, my least, one of my least favorite parts of that entire film was the army of little guys coming out of a wall. 
Um, I thought that they really diminished the final set piece, so I'm like I'm a little biased there as well. Uh, so if we were like dividing up movie Scorponok, uh the concept versions I think are way cooler than the one that was actually in the movie. <laughs> Well, let's talk about that then, because they came up with several concept designs for Scorpnox, and I guess you could technically count all of them as sort of canon, because there are multiple versions, so I imagine they probably transform in different, unique ways. I think the definitive Scorpnox would probably be the middle one, but I can't deny that the one on the far right, this Medusa-looking kind with a long tail, looks really, really cool. It's just so so alien looking like from the movie alien and um, i guess the one on the far left is sort of closer to the studio series one but i think for me i prefer the middle one because it's more aligned to the beast war scorponok i kind of agree with you i think the middle one is the most like it's the one that is that's being the most creative with the mass uh, i think because i i like the like the naga medusa version the most myself because i think that's just wild uh and it's a, it's a really cool way to account for the tail uh, the one on the left is almost like, the one on the left is fine, but the one on the left isn't taking any risks. It's like, it's a guy and the scorpion legs are there and also the scorpion tail's there. And it's like, that's fine. The middle one and the snake tail one kind of like right next to each other. And then the more normal one on the left, probably like one tier below. Now, do we think the Medusa one is better than the middle one? Oh, I would really like to give the snake tail one terrorized, but that's super biased. It's just because I think snake tails are those bodies are cool. I think if we just put both of them next to each other, like they're both really cool. Yeah. So like, I, I yeah, I, I could put these two both in terrorize because I think that they friggin' as they say, they slap. They got they got a lot going on. I would hang out with these two and I'd want them to say that I'm cool. Uh, um, I, I, I don't know about that. Right? Like, <laughs> Now there we have it guys, every Scorpnock design ranked from worst to best. Now Vangelis, if you had to just pick one as your personal favorite, which one would it be? Oh, whoa, what a question. It's probably the Takara Tomy toy release of RID 2015 for being just that right balance of a unique take, cool colors, uh, nice shapes. It's also a toy I can mess with that exists. But I would say it's closely followed by the O. Or I'm going to say the the Stalker Scorpionock redeco of the O7 one. Now I'm not the biggest Scorpionock fan in the world, but if I had to just pick one, it's got to be the Beast Wars one. I just love his character and his design. Yes, it's simple, but it's so cool. I'd like to thank Vangelis for joining me, dude. It's such a pleasure talking with you. Who knew you were the encyclopedia for Scorpionock? I have a terrible sponge brain that soaks up every Transformers thing I've experienced since, like, 1999. <laughs> so, I, yeah. I'm... If you haven't already, do subscribe to Vangelis and check out his content. Recently, you ranked every Armada McDonald's toy, and you did that with TJ Omega. Ours is also a pretty big tier. There were 11 items. It's up there on my live tab. Be sure to check that out. I'm going to check it out because I cannot remember every McDonald's Armada toy, so this is going to refresh my mind. You can now rank every Scorpionock design we've covered in this video on Tier List Maker. A link to that website will be in the description box below. You can become a channel member now and get early access to all these videos, or you can support it on Patreon where you'll also get early access. Until next time, guys, I've been Common and Cam. I've been Chris Vangelist uh, on the internet. And that's some Scorpinox on a list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>